This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. This is Optimal Relationships Daily. If the world is scary, how can our children not be scared? Part 1. By Allison Carmen of alisoncarmen.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to ORD, this time for a parenting edition, and I'm your host, Greg Audino. Now, today, we'll mark the beginning of one of our longer posts, so if you're new here, what I do is split these articles up, reading the first half on one day and the second half on the following day. So with that, open your ears and saddle up for part one of this great long read brought to us by Allison Carmen as we optimize your life. If the world is scary... How Can Our Children Not Be Scared? Part 1 By Allison Carmen of AllisonCarmen.com I grew up in the 70s in the suburbs of Long Island, where every day was filled with beautiful green lawns, lovely homes, safe schools. I never read the newspaper, and I never watched the news on television. It could be said that I grew up in a very insulated community. What did I have to worry about other than doing well in school, dealing with boy crushes, and finding ways to get to the mall? But this is not at all how I felt. For at least 60 minutes every night during my childhood, my heart would race, and I'd inevitably feel like the world was coming to an end. This 60 minutes was dinner time. Why? Throughout dinner, my parents would openly discuss current events, such as the assassination attempt on President Reagan, Black Monday in the stock market, the hostage crisis in Iran, and the bombing of Pan Am Flight 103 over Lockerbie. These frightening world events filled my thoughts throughout the day, and I began to wonder how I would ever be safe in a world where such horrible things could happen. I never told my parents how I was feeling. Instead, I held it all in and became a warrior. As an adult, I realized that the reason I never said anything to my parents about my feeling of doom and gloom at the dinner table was because I didn't know there was an option other than to worry. I don't think my parents knew either. My mother and father were warriors in an era when there were no blogs, online articles, or television segments titled How to Tell Your Children About Scary Events in the World. With all the fear and worry in my home, I honestly believed the world was a scary place, and there was nothing my parents or anybody else could do about it. My parents are now in their 80s, I recently asked them why they had not been more careful about how they talked with me and my siblings about current events so many years ago. My parents told me, essentially, they believe you can't hide from what's happening in the world. They actually wanted their children to know about everything that was happening so we would be prepared with the knowledge of how to face problems and handle our lives appropriately. What I don't think they realized, then or now, is that teaching their children about current events, including some very scary stuff, was only part of the formula for preparing us to face fears about an uncertain world and handle things appropriately. The other essential tool that I needed, and I think my siblings would agree, was something to help me deal emotionally with what was happening, something to help me find strength and resilience to face uncertain times. Many years later, I live in New York City with my husband and two daughters. My children are exposed to troubling world events far beyond the dinner table. My older daughter was in nursery school about one mile from the World Trade Center on 9-11, and even closer to the terrorist attack last year when a car mowed people down on the West Side Highway. My children, like all children in the United States, are now exposed through social media from the minute they wake up until they go to sleep of stories of new types of terrorism, mass shootings at schools, global warming, and a host of other complex problems in the world. While I don't want my children to feel like I did as a child, that the world is a terrible place and that we're all doomed, I also don't want to insulate them from what's actually going on in the world, even if I could. My parents were right to educate me, but I have to do more. I have to give my children more tools than I was given to handle these even more uncertain times. After 9-11, I was watching a news program, and a psychologist came on to share her advice about speaking to children about the terrorist attacks. 
the psychologist said that one of the things I could do to comfort my children was to tell them that most people are safe from terrorist attacks and natural disasters in the world. As much as I like the fact that there is high statistical chance that my children will not be touched by horrendous acts of terrorism or environmental tragedies, would this really give them what they needed to accept the uncertainties of life? There had to be a better perspective to give them besides statistics, a better tool to help them navigate these uncertain times. As my daughters got a little older, I seized on the idea to teach them to be positive thinkers. I had met people through my business dealings that were very successful entrepreneurs who were positive no matter what they faced. Most of them seemed to weather a lot of uncertainties, like losing big clients and even filing bankruptcies only to start a new business the next day. The first time I realized the limits of trying to help my daughters cultivate a perspective of positive thinking to deal with the unknown was when my oldest tried out for her first school play. She told me she was going to stay really positive about getting a part, because when you think positive, good things happen. That's wonderful, honey, I beamed. The day the cast list went up, her name was not there. She said she couldn't believe it, and kept looking at the list again and again for her name. She came home crying hysterically and yelling, Positive thinking doesn't work, I'm never trying out for a play again. To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled, If the World is Scary, How Can Our Children Not Be Scared? by Allison Carmen of AllisonCarmen.com. And I'll be back in a sec with my comments. Okay, and thanks a lot to Allison for a great beginning to this post. Obviously, there is more to get through, but so far, I think we've been given an opportunity to consider how our parents' approaches and our own approaches as parents have a lot more to do with the lived experience of the parents than they do with objective realities about the world or optimal management of emotions. All the more reason it's valuable to question what we've been taught and what we're teaching now. How might the biases be popping up in parenting? So if it's you as a parent, how can you challenge this and set a more open-minded example for your children? If it's your own parents, how can you use this insight to learn about them and empathize with them, and if necessary, even forgive them? So some thoughts to take with you today, everyone. I hope you can contemplate them and make them work for you. Thank you, as always, for being here, and do be sure to join us again for part two tomorrow, where we'll finish this post and where your optimal life awaits.